Imagine a society where everything you do, everything you say, and everything you buy is controlled and evaluated by the authorities. It's not science fiction. In China, it's a reality. From now on, citizens' lives are rated and assessed. This is what the Chinese Communist Party calls social credit. The government here says it is trying to purify society by rewarding those who are trustworthy and punishing those who are not. So like the credit score that most Americans get for how they handle their finances, Chinese citizens are now getting social credit scores. The social credit rating system began testing five years ago in approximately 30 Chinese cities. It will be rolled out across the entire country by 2020. So now the government is tracking citizens' behavior from smoking on a train to jaywalking. If one score drops low enough, they could be denied travel or buying an apartment. When Liu Hu recently tried to book a flight, he was told he was banned from flying because he's on the list of untrustworthy people. Leo was a journalist who was ordered by a court to apologize for a series of tweets he wrote and was then told his apology was insincere. I can't buy property. My child can't go to private school, he says. You feel you're being controlled by the list all the time. And the list is now getting longer, as every Chinese citizen is being assigned a social credit score. Nearly 15 million people have already been prevented from traveling the process made possible thanks to the collection of masses of data in all areas of its citizens' private and public life, and it is set to be implemented nationally in 2020. China's growing network of surveillance cameras makes all of this possible. The country already has an estimated 176 million cameras. This knows every person, every bike, every car, every bus. You can tell whether it is an adult, a child, a male or female, it can recognize more than 4,000 vehicles. For China's population, already scrutinized by the country's 117 million surveillance cameras, the social credit system only signals a further decline in freedom. How far into people's daily mundane activities does this go? Well, I think that the government and the people running the plan would like to go as deeply as possible to determine how to allocate benefits and also how to uh, impact and shape their behavior. In this building, the officials of Rongcheng assign a rating to its inhabitants. We were able to sneak inside and film discreetly for a few minutes. Here, the agents collect data provided by the police, courts and tax office. Each resident is then given a rating from the letter D for not-so-good citizens to triple A for the best. This also applies to companies. In several big cities in China, including here in Shanghai, the government is even tracking jaywalkers. Cameras record them going through intersections, zero in on their face, and then publicly shame them on nearby video screens. Police in Beijing have been wearing these glasses that can recognize faces linked to the government's national database to help boost arrests. How advanced is this technology? This is a cutting edge. Wu Fei is CEO of a company that makes the glasses. He claims he doesn't know how the government intends to use his technology. I have no idea. R really? Yes. Do, do you trust the government the way they're using your technology? Sorry, I can't answer this. Uh, you can't answer that? Uh, uh, this is the outside our scope of questions. China plans to launch a digital mass surveillance systems are stirring concerns of privacy and government accountability across the globe. He says how the new scoring system truly works is kept secret and could be easily abused by the government. Many countries across the globe are experiencing a massive expansion in government surveillance powers and the threats of global instability, terror and war are leaving increasingly less space for privacy and individual freedom in the post-industrial society reward good citizens and punish bad people. Human rights activist Hu Jia is already blacklisted. Deprived of his passport for 10 years, his movements are limited. He says the social credit system will allow authorities to more easily punish those who do not pledge allegiance to the party. In China, the people who will lose the most credit are those who do not agree with the Communist Party. We can't criticize society or the current system, nor should we say bad things about the highest levels of power and the leader. In fact, this social harmony desired by the party is said to maintain the stability of society, but it only serves to guarantee the monopoly of its power. 
we're already moving very quickly, as you know, into a sort of surveillance society where lots of organizations of all types have lots of data about us. If we unify it all around one identity system, that hurdles us far faster and far further into a surveillance society. So let's switch gears a little bit. So you have something else that's really interesting in um, the newsletter about people in Sweden implanting, uh, putting implants, microchips, right, yes. into them. We've seen something like this here. There was, um, there was a company that in they're... Wisconsin, right, yeah. Right, so they could get stuff out of the vending machine yeah. with these microchips. So what's happening in Sweden? So basically in Sweden over the past couple of years, several thousand people have had these little rice grain sized microchips put into their hands, which contain information that they can use to, say, check into the gym or get into the office or uh -huh. pay for train tickets. Right? On the one hand, everyone can appreciate that that's convenient, right? How many times have you been looking for your key fob at the gym or can't remember yeah. your password for something? Um, but I think the bigger question here is, look, as, as the human body itself becomes a technological platform, right, there are big questions we need to consider about what kind of information is put out about us uh, from us, quite literally, and right. also <laughs> further down the line, what kind of access do other people or platforms have to that information that is inside us, right? This yeah. is a biotech question, this kind of blurring of the lines between the human body and tech. I mean, it's one thing if you're holding your smartphone and instead of emitting data about you, it's another thing if your own hand is doing the same thing.